Well, Rolf Kent is a, a wonderful uh, film composer, and um, he's actually worked on uh, several films that we happen to have been sampled on as well, or we happen to have um, been synced on. And um, uh, he had an idea for a song that should play over the end credits, um, an original song. And um, in talking with the director, the two of them sort of came up with the idea that it should sound like the Swingles. It should be that that slightly um, uh, old-fashioned style, um, 60s-ish sound. Um, and as he knew us, he, uh, he approached us and said, would you be interested in doing this? And so we're not on the actual trailer, but uh, if you go and see Downsizing in theatres, we're over the end credits. And it's a song that he, um, he had written essentially the skeleton of, he'd written the, the, the melody and the rhythms and the notes, but he, he uh, hadn't yet finalised the form or all the lyrics. And so we, uh, together with him, we uh, helped him finish off a few verses and change a few lyrics here and there, and then decide on the actual form of the song. Um, and, and Joe wrote the, you wrote the vocal arrangement yeah, as well? Yeah, and we, we recorded the vocal arrangement while on tour, it was all very, very quick. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of naught to, naught to 100 miles an hour, it came out of the blue, um, sorry, just talking cliches, but it, it, it came out of nowhere and um, a few days later we were in the studio uh, recording, um, but we're actually going to see, the, we haven't seen the film yet, we're going to see it tomorrow. Um, we've got the London premiere at the London Film Festival um, and then it's out properly in December um, but it's Rolf has worked on a bunch of Alexander Payne movies like About Schmidt and um, Sideways. I think Sideways and maybe The Descendants as well but, but mm. anyway he's a director that we're all a fan of and Rolf's great so it was, it was just a very happy little happening we had to kind of bust a gut to make sure we could turn it around in a, a few days the space for a few days because that was literally all the time we had to do it but yeah it's really fun so this time around it's actually with a full symphony orchestra which we're we're actually quite used to doing we sort of like to consider ourselves more of a vocal group than an a cappella group um our usual uh, traveling show is a cappella but uh, we uh, often collaborate with uh, orchestras not only on um some of our existing arrangements that we do also do a cappella, but for uh, a few pieces of contemporary music as well. We do um, Berio Symphonia, and we've done some similar projects to that as well. So um, yeah, this time around we're with a, a full symphony orchestra. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was, I think, was recorded one of the big, maybe the MGM, what used to be the MGM soundstage in Hollywood. So mm. it was a big LA orchestra, and we were just, you know, we had that in our ears. Um, um, there's, a there's a couple of little, Am I right in thinking there's a couple of little a cappella moments in the song, like right? just I'm maybe not a verse? Sure. The final mix I don't think ended oh. up with any a cappella moments. Um, that was an initial idea was that one of the verses would be a cappella, but I think... Um, but it's still, it's still recognisably swingly in mm -hmm. the sense that the voices, apart from the lead which is saying the lyrics, the voices are doing quite instrumental textures, mm -hmm. um, but kind of doubled with the orchestra rather than instead of the orchestra. Mm -hmm. We actually have. Uh, we've uh, we've toured with the Boston Pops before, back in two thousand and nine, uh, and we have a, a tour with them coming up, I believe. Yeah, hopefully yeah. it's not all confirmed yet, but yeah. sort of the holiday season of twenty eighteen. We've also done the Barrio Symphony with the Milwaukee um, Symphony Orchestra and um, San Francisco. Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee Symphony. We did we did it in twenty thirteen, and um, San Francisco Symphony last year. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is it's something we do, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, Folklore is our most recent album, um, our most recent studio album, and it's um, basically a collection of music from around the world, mostly traditional music that we've um, that we've arranged and um, it kind of it came out of a place of I think uh, partly just wanting to really emphasize how um, how much different cultures can learn from each other how much we have in common with other cultures um, we're a group that travels a lot and 
you get to hear a lot of fantastic music from different parts of the world um, and so it was it was kind of a, a way to represent that um, on an album there's music from the US from um, the Philippines China Afghanistan Portugal England um, East Africa it's pretty uh, Bulgaria it's pretty varied um, and it it's we kind of uh, just found music that really spoke to us in some way either it was a beautiful melody or it told a story that really connected with us on an emotional level um, so that's the that's been our main kind of touring program for the last uh, year um, is folklore it's one of those things which um because it started as, a, as an accident, um, you know, it was a group of singers who were just singing together. They happened to record uh, an album at around Christmas time that they decided to give to their friends and family. This was in 62, Christmas 62. And um, it eventually was picked up by a French radio station and then an American radio station. And by 1963, it had done so well that uh, they decided to actually form a group and perform together and I, their first gig was actually at the White House and um, for the first 10 years it was essentially the same group of people and so they managed to hone the sound that they made together, um, hone the style, you know they really solidified the beginnings of the group because they were such a strong team and so when, uh, when they'd all sort of had enough of the touring life and when Ward Swingle moved to the UK um, that was in the mid 70s. Um, what's happened since then is that when one person leaves, uh, we just auditioned to replace that one voice part. So I would say that in terms of the evolution of the sound, it's been very, very gradual because when that one person joins, you want them to slot into the team, you want them to disappear into the sound um, whilst bringing uh, a new talent, something new that the others can't do. Um, a new colour and so we, we really pride ourselves on all having very different voices and colours and uh, a, a very different palette to work from while always being able to just disappear and blend into the sound and so since the 70s that sound has stayed very very similar um, but what has changed are the individual colours and of course the personalities that come with the different people and so our, we hope that our, um, our palette is growing uh, whilst retaining that initial very swingle very um distinctive sound yeah it's very important to us that for instance we can still whip out a bach fugue and it still sounds like recognizably the swingles mm -hmm. um but we we also in in the last several years um we've had a lot of conversations about how to move forward artistically mm -hmm. how to make sure that we are kind of honouring the legacy of the group in in the sense that we see it as the you know being a group that was always innovating was always being creative trying new things because that's you know how the group started um, and so there's always th there's what you don't want to become is a, a nostalgia tribute act to something that people remember from the 60s and 70s so it's very important to us that we're creating music that's um, that's fresh, that's of the moment, um, and that includes writing originals, it includes um, playing around with live looping, as Joe mentioned, and, um, and just kind of expanding our sonic palette um, so that we're, because you know, we're, we're, it's a living, breathing thing, and um, a cappella music today is, it has, you know, has, the landscape of vocal music has changed so much uh, since the 60s that um, we want to you know stay part of the of what's happening now and part of the conversation and, and drive it um, in fact <laughs> 